What's going on, everybody? Happy Friday, last day of the week. Last day of the week for most of us. But don't forget tonight, overtime is getting bumped a half hour to left. We're going to start 10.30 Eastern Standard Time. Myself and CBC, if anybody else ever wants to jump in, just hit me up. I'll give you the link to Zoom. All you got to do is make a free Zoom account. You can come in, chat with us. We're all live during YouTube. If not, you don't want to come live, you're always free to come into the chat. We always discuss stuff. A lot of information gets passed around. Um, we try no bashing. No bashing allowed except for when I bash CBC or he bashes me now. Actually, you can all bash CBC if you want. Just kidding, just kidding. It's only because he's a Trevor Lawrence fan. All right, <laughs> enough with my jokes. Enough with my jokes. So, hopefully you guys can come in tonight. Uh, it's usually, we do these about three times a month. Uh, depending on shows for me, and then along with when we do the live sale and auction. But a lot of stuff to talk about. I'm sure it's going to go about three hours tonight. If not, you guys can always check the video out afterwards. So I'm going to pull something up here on my screen. Joey actually shared this t with me, I believe it was yesterday, so i got to give him credit on to it. And this was done by the Wall Street Journal, and it was published on a thing called Flipboard. How a new generation of card enthusiasts are transforming a market. So, there's really not like a huge article here. The video itself is kind of interesting, but I see a couple things in here, and I'm going to talk about them real quick. I'm not going to play the video. The link will be in the description if you guys want to watch the video. So they're like the highest sales ever to date, or the highest set prices ever paid for sports cards have happened currently within the last year. And my first thought is, no kidding. I mean, I wouldn't expect they happened 10 years ago. We had a big, huge boom in the market. All these people came in, started hedge funds and everything. Let's see if I can get it moved up here. And they talk about over $6 million Honest Wagner. Well, yeah, that's going to happen when the market booms, you know. So, I mean, it was nothing surprising in the beginning of the video to me. And I'll hit the one part that I didn't know. And I should have known, but I didn't. Let me see here. They talk about grading. Um, there's, it's just like real small into grading onto it all. And it's right here is where they start talking about it. And they go over, you know, uh, they do look at four areas, the corners, surface, edges, and... Uh, centering <laughs> almost forgot my four areas onto it you know it's stuff that we all know already um to me i was expecting more in depth onto this it's really not it's basically just talks about baseball cards again and i'm just trying to find where its next part's at here they talk going to alt and how he made a marketplace to do all this stuff and i'm like i got it you know you made a website up it's doing well for him i've never used alt i've heard there was some kind of data leak or breach or something at all and i forget what it was offhand i don't know what all was about it but i didn't have an account on there so i don't know what all came about it most of y'all know i got my own website and then i use uh the card shows i go to the Facebook groups that I belong to that, you know, you got to be vouched to get into. And then along with uh, my slabs. And I'm happy with just those those platforms there to move any sports cards I want or buy off of. But Golden Auctions, they talked about that. There we go, Kenny Golden, the big old smile. Y'all remember him from the QBC? He used to be the dude who called in. All right. And if you don't, you got to go back and watch some of the old videos. It's it's in It's in insane insane it's very addicting too but i didn't realize they talked about and said mark cuban was part of the group that bought into uh bought golden auctions outright i had no clue onto that to be honest that's the part that shocked me because i figured mark cuban would have been i think it was him and durant and some other people that were all part of this uh group and i was just really surprised by i mean I know Cuban owns the Mavericks and all this, and he's a big sports enthusiast and everything. And, you know, I, I just I didn't know about it. It was just something I learned from the video. The only thing I learned out of the video, I'm pretty sure, as I skimmed back through. But, you know, 
I don't know. I, I from Mark Cuban being from Pittsburgh and knowing what his upbringing was and stuff like that. Hopefully he does something better with Golden Auction and with that group, and it really digs into it. I'm really hoping so. All right, let's move on past Kenny Golden here. You guys are probably already laughing at this picture, and probably somebody probably drew Devil's little tail and horns onto him on the screen. I know somebody out there did that. All right. Then he starts going back into, and this is what the, I'm really starting to wonder what the catch was to the video. If you guys, when you guys listen to it, it talks about people are going in their closets and looking for their old cards and all that. What I think they're trying to do is trying to find those cards from that era that were locked away to get people to bring them out and sell them so they can buy them. And because I could tell you now, there's a lot of people that I've talked to, especially local out here, that have been holding stuff for a very, very long time. And some of the stuff they got is just amazing, but they're not going to sell it anytime soon. Their idea is like, I'm going to leave it for my grandkids and their kids and stuff on. You know, sometimes it's good to sell part of it, make your money, and then hold on to the rest as an investment. But everybody's going to have their own method for how they're going to, you know, what they want to do with their investment or their hobby, their collection, whatever it may be. But I, I just found it interesting they kept talking about that for a big length about people going in there and trying to find stuff they had when they were buying all these packs and stuff. And they kind of start hitting into flipping here eventually. This starts talking about the Kobe stuff. Uh, I don't know why Zillow's on here, to be honest. That might be an ad. Well, anyhow, then it goes into breaking, and the guy tries to act like as if breaking just came around in the last couple years. Breaking's been around since, like, oh, I bet you 2005-ish, 6, somewhere around there. And it used to be correct. It was a group of people. You might be friends and never have met, but you've been that part of that clique, did a lot of deals over... Um, Certain forums like Beckett, HobbyInsider.net, PSA board, stuff like that there. You'd get a case. Somebody would stream it live on like Ustream. And you got it your teams, you know. Normally, you know, they would sell teams outright. You can get a couple, you know, or you bought a team and you got two randoms. You pick a team out of the 30 that were out there. You know, it was all kind of different things. And it was pretty good back then. But they act as if it's something new. It just come out over the last couple of years. It really hasn't. Um, it's just surprising. They they try to pitch breaking a lot more onto it with it. You're doing it with a group of friends. Well, not really, because now breaking has gone into being a full time business to where not everybody in that room is a group of friends. Before, you know, you would get ten to fifteen people, and you'd be like, "Hey, man, I know." Freaking extreme loves the Pittsburgh Penguins. Let's bring him in on this because he'll want the Penguins. And then somebody will hit you up. Hey, man, you interested in doing our break with us? I know you're a Penguins fan. They're 50 bucks, you know, back then. I'm just throwing a price out. And I'd be like, oh, man, cool. Full case? Yeah, I'm in. And, you know, you send the dude over the money on PayPal or whatever we were using back then onto it. Mostly it was all PayPal. But that, that's how we did it, you know. There wasn't all these websites you go on there, breaks, you know, the stuff was shipped out, all that other stuff. I, I just found it kind of interesting. They're like thinking breaking's just been around here within the last year or two. It's been around for a long time. Um, like I said, it started off on Ustream, and then I know it ventured to different other platforms. Um, Vaughn TV took over for a while, which turned into Breakers TV. But due to too many people bouncing on the site and crashing, a lot of guys had to have YouTube as a backup. That's how we started coming on YouTube, Twitch. Now it's everywhere. Everywhere across the board you go. TikTok's even doing breaks anymore. TikTok's, Instagram, um, you name it. If, if there's some kind of social media way you can go live and do something... They're doing it, and it's a ton of retail stuff being broken every which way I look at. I see hangers that cost like 30, 40 bucks. I know they went up in price. I'm just throwing money out there. And guys are breaking them at $200. 200 Man, go on eBay and go buy yourself a box for what you're spending on to. At least you get all the cards in it. Means, I, I just, I when I look at it, it makes no sense anymore. You know, back in the day, we used to do crazy stuff. 
where it was like a full case of prison basketball. The low, you you basically would get a box out of the case. It was like no lie, it was like thirty bucks, I think, maybe forty at the most. The lowest left hand serial number like would take it or something like that. We would do take the whole case. I mean, it was cheap and affordable back then. You don't do that stuff now. I mean, I was there. I was telling people. I remember doing flawless full case. That's two briefcases, two hundred and fifty dollars a spot, and you got a, a a left side serial number zero through nine. And anything on that left hand serial number, and then one of those numbers was yours. And it was great. That was the most expensive thing you would see going around was $250 getting a break. Now we're talking three to 5000 depending on what the sport is and what the team and the player and all that other stuff is. And they're producing so many autos now that as long as you played one day on an NBA team, you're eligible to have an autograph in National Treasures, Flawless, iMac, whatever it may be. And I'm just, it, it's because they need to put, make more of the product to meet the demand out there that everybody's wanting of it. So your hits and everything are way more spaced out. So, you know, and I just had to talk with my, even my new distributor rep about the same thing. It makes no sense. I mean, I can see that if somebody's going to break something under market value or resale value and it makes sense yeah i'll get into it you know occasionally because i like the product you know definitive diamond icons dynasty whatever it may be i'll get into it because i'm not going to spend five thousand dollars in a box but i'll put in a hundred or two hundred bucks in the break back then a hundred two hundred bucks in the break you were usually getting two or three spots into it especially in fillers but you know the whole thing with breaking is just really really evolved and it's it's shame what's really I don't want to say what it's turned into because that's not where I want to say. There's a lot of good breakers out there, but it's a shame that it's turned into where people can't even perform a simple break correctly. And you guys know exactly where I'm coming from on all that. But yeah, th this video I mean he sh he sent it to me and I was watching it and I'm like ah I just you know to me there I'm just not. You know, I don't think it's a great thing, this video, or what they talk about on to here. Because all this stuff is known. It's been talked about. It's hit headlines on all the sales. I mean, ESPN talks about it. Front page on Yahoo. That, you know, Tom Brady rookie card just sold for $3 million or something like that. So it, it, it was nothing. It was a whole lot of valuable information to me. Minus, I didn't know Mark Cuban was part of that group, which I was like, huh, that's kind of interesting. Overall that, you know, he was part of that and Durant and stuff that bought into it. Nowhere do they talk about fanatics. Them taking the licensing over. Do they do talk about um, all the scandals going on out there? And they could go any which way. They don't even mention grading companies like who you can grade with. At least I don't remember. I just remember seeing the SGC slabs. I mean, th there's so much more information that she put into that video other than just some, you know, generic stuff we just threw together and, hey, here, here's a video so we can get, you know, some hits or whatever they're doing to, you know, onto their uh, website, newspaper ratings, whatever. I don't know what they call that stuff anymore. But it, it, it was just different, just different for me offhand. Um, I, I still haven't asked Joey why he sent it to me to begin with. I mean, we just talked last night because a lot of times people send me stuff just to see, you know, what I'm going to think about it and stuff, but, huh, definitely, definitely was not the best video to put out there, and it doesn't, it, it's like all the new, it, what, what's that sentence right over here, hold on, right here, a new crop of entrepreneurs is betting big, the trading cards are no longer hobbies, hobbyists, collectibles, they're serious investment assets, they talked a little bit about hedge funds, not much onto it, and, to me, once we start rolling the hedge ones, I do thank people because it started that stuff because they shot my cards up. I made some money. But in the long term, they are correct. I mean, it's not really a hobby anymore. It's an investment. I mean, how many people out there still build sets? Seriously, if you still build sets, write a comment in the chat. I'm curious. I still build sets. I'm just not very open about building sets. You know, um, 
it, it's just something nobody really talks about or you hear about anymore. Set building. You, you don't even really hear PSA set registry unless, you know, I'm usually talking like why I still grade with PSA right now mostly and why I've been with them for so long. I mean, if other companies were doing uh, registries to where there's a, like rewards or awards at the end of the year and stuff like that, I'd be all through it. All through it. Because I just think it's great because you can go out there, you got a little database, and you get to compare yourself to other people out there, see how well you rank. I mean, some people take this competition. I took it. I still take it as fun. I still do take it as having fun with a hobby onto it. But I'm going to hit a lot of this stuff up on overtime tonight. So if you guys get a chance, stop in, say hello in the chat. Uh, again, I'll be at a card show. Well, multiple card shows tomorrow. We got Louisville, Lexington, Nashville. I've scratched out Nashville because it's just going to be too packed down there for me because they got Beckett coming in. And I think I could get better deals with the local, yeah, the local shows because there's not going to be a high volume of traffic. Everybody's going to want to go to Nashville. So I figure I'll hit both those up. I'll do one video for Louisville, one view for, video for Lexington, unless I go in there and there's like nobody really at each show. I might combine them. My whole idea is to go in there, try to make some deals, get some stuff for the website to throw up there. And yes, I am stocking the website up uh, throughout the weekend. So uh, start looking like Saturday evening through Sunday evening. I'll have everything that I need to put back into the store, like newer stuff all into it. But all right, everybody. Take care. Have a good one. Hopefully get to see you tonight for the live. Hey, uh, the uh, gridiron um, football challenge thing that we're doing this week. Wow. McCaffrey done, but I think there was like five or six people took Houston. Everybody else took Carolina. So it'll be quite, it'll be quite fun to see who ends up being a top dog this week. And then we'll run probably back next week. Now, I'll do a video on that too. But other than that, you guys have a good weekend. Stay safe out there as always. And I'll catch you all next video.